What is up everyone? Today we're back in the shop continuing our work on the Project 914. Uh, last episode I ended it with showing you, or with the fuel leak uh, issue that um, was pretty bad, but I uh, got it all sorted out. It only smelled in here for like a day or two or whatever. Um, but I ended up fixing that off camera. It was just the uh, line that went from the tank to the pump itself. Um, the previous owner, which uh, I know if you've been watching my videos for a while, you remember he did all sorts of horrible crap. Um, but I thought I was over with his garbage, but obviously I wasn't because that was on him. He hadn't put a f hose clamp on the that hose, so while it hadn't come off, it was almost completely slipped off to where whenever you would have the pump running, uh, it would squirt most of the fuel out of that hose instead and causing the car not to start. Uh, so I basically just threw a new hose on there, put a hose clamp, it's all good, fires right back up again. So that is fixed, thank God. Um, thankfully I didn't have to pull the tank or anything, anything. There's a little access panel underneath the car, just fixed it through there. But today I'm gonna be installing a wideband oxygen sensor. I've got an a AEM Yugo um, that I just picked up off of Summit Racing, I believe. But that'll be going in it so that we can finally tune the car and actually see what the air-fuel ratios are and everything. So let's get started with that. So in order to install it, it has to be, um, a bung has to be welded into the exhaust about 18 inches downstream. Now I have two exhaust uh, runners coming off, so I'm just gonna run it off of the passenger side because that's closer to the ECU. It'll make wiring easier so it doesn't have to run all the way across the car. Uh, eventually, I'll be doing a different exhaust on this car because this one is obviously way too loud, but this will do the trick just for short term and tuning and everything. When I weld a new exhaust, it'll be getting a new bung and a new location for the oxygen sensor. Now, I'm not really a fan of how this exhaust sounds. It's just too loud and too tractory, um, but I am a fan of how easily it's taken off. About 15 seconds and it's off. All right, so you got five main components when you order this. This is, again, AEM Yugo. Uh, I'll be putting a link in the description for this. But essentially you've got the oxygen sensor itself, um, some wiring, another wiring, which this is the plug that goes to the oxygen sensor, the gauge, as well as just it comes with a bung for the oxygen sensor. So let me explain how this works. This is no controller because the controller is built in to the gauge itself. You can see you've got two plugs back here. It'll focus, come on. All right, so you got two plugs. You got one side, which is gonna hook up to the harness that connects to the oxygen sensor. And you've got another side that hooks up to this harness. Now let me explain how it works. This harness is just for carrying data from the oxygen sensor to the gauge itself. This one, the, the end has four bare wires on it, so you've got a power, ground, serial data, and some other data. I forget which one it is. So essentially, you can run it just with power and ground, leave these two bare, and you'll get your um, reading out on your gauge. However, if you want to do data logging or hook it up to your ECU, like I'm going to be hooking up to the Mega Squirt, that is what these two wires are for. Hook them up to the ECU, and then the ECU can read your uh, AFRs as well. All right, so you got serial output and then just zero to five volts output. That's what it is. Okay, so uh, the only thing you really need to know is you need to install it about 18 inches from the header if it's a naturally aspirated engine. If it's a turbocharged engine, you mount it after the turbo. And uh, you have to mount it at an angle of at least 10 degrees pointed up um, from perpendicular so that you don't get water uh, pooling inside the sensor and killing the sensor essentially. If you do do that then if you don't do that then it can cause water to con condensate inside the sensor and give you issues. So got to drill a hole in the exhaust size for the bung. Um, I'm gonna move it actually back just a little ways. Uh, I'm gonna try to get it right at 18 inches if I can. I don't want it to be too close to the exit just so I'm not getting weird readings from it being out here. All right, so now all I gotta do is drill a hole 
for the bung, which is right here. As you can see, this bung is stepped. Focus, you f All right, so I'm gonna drill it to this size, so then I can put that step in there, weld around it, and call it a day. is drilled shut perfectly to where that fits in snug. Cleaned up the exhaust pipe with a grinder real quick. Now I just get to weld it. We get it bro, you vape. So once you've got that bung welded in, uh, all you gotta do is run the wiring. So I've already got it ran. Uh, down here with the stock wiring and up to here. Then you gotta find a place to mount the gauge. So I just have it zip tied in there for temporary use right now. Um, and then all you have to do to get it up and running is get your four wires and wire them in. So one of them's gonna go to the ground. In my case, I want it to be accurate with the mega squirt, so I have to ground it in the same location as the mega, squirt's, mega squirt is grounded. This is gonna go to a switch 12 volt source, which I'm just gonna pull off of the stock uh, fuse block and that's pretty easy just a spade connector on the end of there um, And then this blue water er, actually just this white wire is what I'm gonna need to go to um, Let's see. Where is it over there on the harness? That pink wire that's coming out those are gonna hook up to each other and that is going to get the output to My mega squirt the other one is gonna be unused for me uh, if I wanted to do a serial output in the future I can always tie it in but for now I'm gonna hook up those wires real quick and see if it works. All right, so I got it all wired to get wired in again. That's ground at the same place that the mega squirt itself is grounded. I've got a switched 12 volt, and I actually just ended up tying into the uh, where the factory gauges were because that was switched 12 volt, and it's right in the perfect spot. And then the 5 volt output down here. I've got my laptop hooked up with the mega squirt. Let's see. If it works, there's the gauge down there. There we go. And it's showing an output on the computer. Before it was just showing pinned out max, so that is working. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna start it, see what the air fuel ratios are at, just at idle. Um, I'm guessing it's gonna be like super rich, so let's see. Oh, it died. All right, so that's gonna be all the tuning I do for today. I just let the auto-tune run for a bit. Um, it actually helped even without driving it at all, surprisingly. It let it rev sometimes when I'd give it a uh, throttle which is a lot more than you could say before. That's where I'm going to end it. This was a short one, but uh, I just want to get this thing installed. Next video, we'll be actually taking it out, hopefully, and tuning it and stuff, so excited for that. Make sure to like if you like this video, comment what you think of all this, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. Peace.